Well, welcome to the latest instalment of the Stevens Capital Thinking Series. My name is Jamie Legg, and today I'm going to be talking to two of the managing directors here in London about trends across the private equity space, as well as in the asset and wealth management space. I'm really pleased to be joined by Hugh Elwes, Managing Director, who leads the Financial Services Group here in Europe, and Simon Tilly, Managing Director, who leads the European Financial Sponsors Group. So Simon, uh, starting with you, we've seen that private equity continues to outperform most other private assets uh, year to date. I want to start by asking you, over the last year, how have sponsors been evaluating potential acquisitions and determining how best to exit their holdings? Thank you, Jamie. Great question. I think, firstly, let's just recall that the initial reaction of private equity firms to the arrival of the pandemic in March last year was an immediate focus on the portfolio um, and really just to make sure that everything was under control. Um, And I think we'll recall that a combination of positive investor and management actions combined with generous state-sponsored liquidity and support packages averted the immediate crisis for a large majority of private equity-backed businesses. Secondly, investors' focus then quite rapidly turned to how best to approach fund deployment and deal-making in what had become a significantly changed world. Um, A huge amount of private equity capital was was raised over the period 2017 to 2020, and actually much more has been raised since. With with most of that capital being raised in traditional 10-year limited life funds, and in such a competitive environment, the challenge really has been around how to deploy that capital both responsibly as well as profitably. Pricing has continued to inflate over the period of the pandemic and in particular for companies that demonstrate that highly desirable combination of resilience and growth. I I do think we must now be within touching distance of peak multiple. There remains a, a huge amount of dry powder awaiting deployment. That's both debt and as well as equity. And whilst we do see some potential headwinds next year in terms of inflation, interest rates, ongoing energy and supply chain challenges, as well as labour challenges, it's not clear that there is any significant event that is going to derail current market sentiment. And I think thirdly, um, one of the the obvious impacts of the pandemic has been on private equity hold periods. Private equity firms are holding assets for longer in order to aid value recovery and really to, to, to make up for the lost 18 months um, that the pandemic has given us. That gives rise to demand for add-on M&A to supplement a return to organic growth. And it gives rise to some innovation in the industry. For example, the, con- the, the, the increasing use of continuation funds. Um, we're seeing some private equity firms prizing the opportunity to reinvest in businesses that they sell. And, and they're often seeking um, a minority ongoing holding alongside the new institutional owner. Where better to invest your capital than in a business that's already performed well for you and your investors? Um, Reinvesting also provides the acquiring sponsor in that kind of scenario with reassurance around their own opportunity with the business and reassurance that whilst they might be digging deep, they're not buying in at a valuation that lacks justification. Interesting. Um, t- today, Simon, we're talking from London, but obviously Stevens has a, a big practice in the United States. I wanted to yeah. ask you, how much transatlantic activity have you seen involving sponsors in, well, over the past year? And how do you see this shaping next year in 2022? Yeah, th- thanks, Jamie. Great question. We- we- we've seen a-, a real increase in transatlantic private equity deal activity over um, the-, the pandemic period. Um, European private equity firms have been investing over the last decade or more in their own boots on the ground in North America. And this started some years ago with large cap private equity firms, but we're now seeing an increasing number of mid cap firms that are, are also investing in their own on the ground resources. For some, it's about finding platform investments in North America, where the European private equity, equity firm can leverage its experience and reach to drive international growth. Whereas for for others, it's about supporting European portfolio company growth into North America. Um, We've also seen strong US private equity interests to invest in European companies. Um, We regularly see and engage with US private equity firms in our deal flow here in Europe. Um, We've got a good example um, of a financial services business that we advised last year on the sale of a 
circa 100 million euro minority stake, where we had inbound expressions of interest from dozens of blue chip investors, around half of which came from the US. Now, what's driving US private equities interest in Europe? I, th I think it's a combination of pricing. I think it's to do with competition in their own domestic market in the US. And it's about having the confidence to leverage their own domestic investing experience and expertise to create global platforms of scale. Uh, it's important that investors remain cognizant of headwinds, including inflation, supply chain, ongoing labor challenges. However, here in, Euro here in Europe, we remain positive about the opportunity for private equity to continue to deploy capital profitably into high quality, resilient and growing businesses during 2022. Great. Well, thank you, Simon. Uh, Hugh, moving to you, um, you and I have spoken recently about uh, there's almost been a, a deal a day here in, in the UK uh, across the asset management space. Um, what, what do you think have been the main forces that have been driving consolidation across both the asset management as well as the wealth management space? I think in asset management, there are a few drivers. There is uh, definitely a long term fee pressure, which continues uh, for active managers and also they're looking to upgrade their technology um, and add um, capabilities which are you know, from client demands so those seem to be the main drivers between asset management consolidation and wealth it's been busier uh, and will continue to be so because we're seeing a huge consolidation of 5,000 different independent businesses across the UK into regional hubs. Um, when we last looked, uh, which was recently, there are now 14 different private equity-backed vehicles rolling up wealth managers in the UK, which is up from about four, three years ago, uh, and also active trade consolidators uh, buying up these businesses as well. So all of that is leading to a lot of activity uh, last year, this year, and will go into next year. Great, and we've just um, recently hosted here in the UK in Glasgow, COP26. Um, why do you think that's such an important issue for the uh, assets and wealth management industry? I think there's, it's been obviously very topical in the UK in the last two weeks. Um, not only have the world leaders turned up and uh, put together a statement coming out of the conference, but a lot of the capital um, behind the asset management industry has also watched with great interest what's happening. There is enormous demand from clients for properly ESG compliant type product. Uh, they're being asked uh, <coughs> by clients constantly to uh, move forward in terms of the way in which they look at the ESG criteria for investment. Uh, and that's, I think, generally a good thing for the asset management industry. If they're seen to be at the forefront of driving the changes in companies to become greener and more compliant, um, that is a force for good. Great. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a busy start to the, the, the new year. Um, well, Simon and Hugh, thank you both very much for joining me today. It's been a highly informative conversation. And on behalf of us all here at Stevens, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you.